In my episode, yeah, so it's, it'd be a boring one. So it's going to be okay. super interesting. We'll get, it done, we'll get it done in five minutes. It's fine. I'm going to be here looking at my watch the whole time. <laughs> yeah, can we cut away when she yawns? Is that, okay? Is that fine? Yeah. So, you did your episode with the VR stuff and the AR stuff from the future. So I thought, right, I'm going to have to up my game here. I'm going to have to do some device stuff. So I am going to talk about this device. Did you just find the, the first device you had lying around in front of you? Yes. <laughs> that is exactly what I did. I brought this from my desk as well, because uh, I want to talk about handling user input. Now, here's the thing, right? The title of this video below will not be that. It will be different to that. It's yeah. just let you in on some of the behind-the-scenes right. stuff. Because at some point between now and the video going out, uh, Aaron, our producer, will point out that this is the most boring title that has ever been written on the screen. <laughs> He'll suggest something like the 20 most ways to optimize your input mania experience. Oh, do something, that for something. my video, too. Yeah, and we'll come to some kind of compromise that isn't that. But yeah. so that's what will be written, right, cool. written below now. But yeah, basically, I want to talk about keyboards. Cool. Uh, I mean, we've all got them. What? Well. Oh. Well. No, well. Yeah. We'll get on to that. <gasps> so this all started with uh, Guillermo posting about uh, a, a Wordle clone mm. uh, written in, in Vercel and Next.js and all of that sort of stuff. Uh, Great. Uh, and I replied, doesn't work, mate. Um, and that was as helpful as I could be at the time. Yeah. How That's that? the best feedback a developer loves to hear. Yeah, yeah, because he asked, what error are you getting? He's like, I don't know. I'm on my phone. Bye. I'm out for the day. <laughs> Soz. Um, but we found out that the, the error was only happening on, on Chrome and Android, or on okay. Android in, in mm. general. So let's look at what's, what's actually going on here. This is Wordle. You play Wordle, right? Yeah. Everyone plays Wordle. Everyone plays Wordle. Um, it looks a bit like this, or this is what the Versal one uh, looks like. It's a little bit different to the actual Wordle, because mm. it, it doesn't have the keyboard on the screen. Yeah. Uh, they were using the real keyboard for yeah. all of the inputs, so that, like on desktop and, and on phone. Uh, and that's the bit that, that wasn't working for me. So I thought, like, Let's take a look at an implementation of how you might code some of something like that up. Yeah. First up, we're going to use a div. All right. Yeah. This is where we're going to put the letter. Then we're going to get the JavaScript going. We're going to get that element, and then on key down, we're going to have a look at the key and see if it's like a lowercase a to z because we don't care about the other keys. Mm -hmm. And if it is one of those keys, we'll pop it in that div. Yeah. Click. Done. Surely you have to make that element focusable. Why? So that it has. Oh, because you'll get the. So your add event listener is that. I'm guessing it's on the document, not on. On the window, but yeah, equ okay. e equivalent. So you're not doing it on a per element. But you're so right. That someone could click on a letter and. The problem. The main problem here is on mobile. You're not going to get the keyboard. Yeah. Um, so to fix that, we'll just throw an input on there mm. and like visually hide it, but make it cover the real, the, the the visual thing, like the squares. So when the user taps that on their yeah. phone, it'll it'll open the keyboard. Would an alternative here be putting content edi editable on the div itself? Yes. Although if you use content editable, then you have to deal with all sorts of things like bold and other styling uh, that comes yeah. with the. There is actually a content editable. Uh, thing to say, I want this to be content editable, but just text. Mm -hmm. um, but that is, I believe, Chrome only. Oh. Um, so we can't use it here. But yeah, this this implementation works fine on desktop. It does not work on Android, on Chrome. So I thought we'd play a game. <laughs> Which key was pressed? All right. It's the hot new game show everyone's talking about. I, I love you even had an animated. Um, Introduction for this. Thank you for noticing. I will play it again. Uh, uh, 
Uh, oh, that's hey. beautiful. With the little pause between each word. Yeah. Spectacular. I, I spent a lot of time on these slides. I am glad you're appreciating <laughs> it. Um, but yeah, so you're going to play this game. I want to know what key was pressed. All right. Here we go. Round one. <laughs> w. Assuming a QWERTY keyboard. Very good. I mean, yeah, the answer is it is complicated. Yeah. But you have hit upon one of the complicated bits. So you get these two pieces of data uh, on your on your event, event.key, event.code. And it is split like uh, this. Which is is hitting upon what you said there about like part of it is to do with the key and part of it is to do with the thing that's written on yeah. the key. So okay, it's easier to explain like this. Here is a keyboard. Mm -hmm. This is the key we're talking about. Yeah. And like you say, on a QWERTY keyboard, that is the one with the W printed on it. Yeah. So key, event.key is W, the string yeah. W, and event.code is the string key W. Yep. Great. But as you pointed out, if we are in an Azerty keyboard, like a French-Belgian keyboard, yeah. the key is Z, and the code is still key W. Ah, oh, now that's interesting. Hmm. And again, if we're in this, do you know this layout? No. This what? is, uh, I'll show the whole thing. This is Dvorak. Um, wow. It is, I, I have met people who use this keyboard layout. Um, they, they will swear by it, say it's much easier to use. <laughs> <coughs> yep, this, so this is Dvorak. So yeah, in this case, your key will be comma, but your code is still going to be key w. Yeah. And that's the split one. Because the, these mappings are software, Yeah. usually. You can buy super nerdy keyboards where you can override the firmware yeah. and change that. But most people don't do that. It's, it's software. So the split there is, is that the key is taking that into account, that mapping into account, whereas mm -hmm. the code does not. So I can see why this would be really useful for if you wanted to have a video game that used W, A, S, and D buttons in order to move. But in this case, you don't want to be using W, A, S, and D on the Dvorak keyboard. If you were going to do a game and you were doing the first person shooter stuff, yeah, yeah the thing you care about is the code. Yeah. Because you don't care what's printed on that key. You care about it being there yeah. on, on the keyboard. Whereas if you were saying in your app, like, oh, Control and W toggles widescreen mode yeah. or whatever. Now it's the key. Because you, you care, you, you want to follow that around the keyboard. You want it to be the one with the, the W written on it, um, no matter where that is on the, on the keyboard. Cool. So next round. All right. Which key was pressed? Oh, I've got to base myself now, because I think you're going to have more tricks up your sleeve. You, I, you aced the first one. What about this one? Ooh. So I definitely say, like, the key is E. Mm -hmm. And then you'd think the key code, well, if I were to take a naive guess, because I've never written code for this before, mm -hmm. I would either say it would be, like, if you short press it, key code for, like, key E, and if you long press it, key 3. So yeah, I did try and catch you out there. Here's the full video. Oh! oh. So what do you think? Oh, I, I don't speak a language which has an accented E. So no, I'm in not England, sure we don't use accents because we're worried they might fall off and cause unnecessary punctuation. <laughs> so we skip that whole thing. So I'm not sure what you would normally do for the keyboard shortcut, because normally if I need to do that, I go to Wikipedia, type in a <laughs> word, which I know has an accent, and then copy and paste the character. Yeah. Because um, I am very inefficient in all things. Um, so I would say the answer here is, again, it's complicated. Yeah. As, as you hinted at. Um, on Unidentified. Yeah, this is on Android. It says the key is the string. Unidentified. And Sorry. the code is blank. The code is blank. That's against the spec. That's, okay. It shouldn't do that. There was an early version of the spec that said 
if you don't know what the code is, use an empty string. The updated version of the spec says, use the string on unidentified. There's a bug open to fix that, yeah. uh, but it's been open for a long time. So OK, I, but I in this know. case, how, how do you know that the user typed an E with an accent without reading the last letter of the value of the input in which it was typed? That is a good question, and we will come on to that. All right. That is absolutely the right question to ask. But on iOS or iOS, is iOS the way to say it, or is it iOS? I don't know. I work for Samsung. OK, that's fine. <laughs> <laughs> I work for Google, so we can say it however we want. OK, iOS will say the key is E with an accent, mm -hmm. um, but it will say the code is unidentified. So that seems very sensible. I think that is more sensible as well. Yeah. All right. This happens on Mac. If you hold down E, you get this pop-up. Wait, on a on a desktop? Desktop Mac. You and so it doesn't give you E, it gives you a single E, and then this pop-up appears. Ah. But you get repeat key down events all the time you're holding the E, even though you're not getting repeat E's. Weird. Which I think like th this has been a historical weirdness with key events where you get like that they're asymmetric. You get yeah. many key down events and one key up at the end. And I, I think it's weird that Mac does this. But then testing Chrome OS and Windows, if you hold down the Shift key, you get many Shift like key downs, which I think is totally wrong, because that key just goes, there's no repeat I guess, action for that. So I remember I used to make games back in the Visual Basic days where you would control it with the arrows, and I would just listen for the arrow down events. And you would hold down an arrow, and it would fire multiple events. But so I think repeat think arrow works, because yeah, if, if you're on an input and you hold down the arrow key and it, the cursor goes along, that's a repeat action. Yeah, I think that makes sense. And I think repeat actions make sense, especially when you want to adapt to the operating system's setting of, of repeat mm. frequency. Yeah, doesn't seem to make sense with shift. Or I've, in this case, I'd said a thought. Is this is why people now do keyboard smash rather than type in lol with many O's? Because you couldn't, it's not easy to type many O's. You can't just hold it down. What's keyboard smash? Uh, where well you just do like. Oh, like that. OK, that's cool. OK. Yeah. I, yeah. Yeah. That would make sense. Yeah, because a lot of, like, on, on Mac especially, yeah, it doesn't do the keyboard repeating anymore. It doesn't do it on phones either. Yeah. All right. And also, you couldn't do like what's up? Because now it's really difficult to type. And I think that's great. I'm glad that that, <laughs> that era has passed us by. I'm still stuck in 2002. <laughs> that was my university day. Right, next round. Which key was pressed? All right. All right. All right, here we go. Boop. Wait, can you play that again? Nope. Yes, I will play it again. Boop. So you just tapped the E. So if I'm thinking it's being sensible, then I'm going to say, like, key code E, key E. All right. All right. It's complicated. <laughs> 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 I, I jumped both feet into that one. No, but I, I think what you're saying Wait, is fair. What? So Android is back with its unidentified, and I don't know. So the, the, for the soft keyboard, it just does, does nothing. So Android's stand on this. And this is not Chrome's doing. It's not really Android's doing. It's the Android keyboard's doing. Mm. Because if you plug a real keyboard into Android, you will be getting different answers to this. I this mean, is the visual keyboard doing this. I could plug a phone into our HDMI cable here, and we could test and, it and if see, you want. See, no, I've tested enough devices as part of All this. Right. <laughs> no, and, but I, enough to tell you that iOS does a different thing. All right. And that will give you. Wait, you can plug the external keyboard into iOS. You can as well, yes. Oh, I, and cool. I think the the answers it will give are different as well. Yeah, yeah hardware keyboard and software keyboards are going to give you different answers in in this yeah. system. So the way Android looks at this is, yeah, like this is a software keyboard. All bets are off. Like it, the rules don't make sense, mm. so we're not going to have the rule. It, yeah. Whereas iOS is trying to be more helpful. I I think it's good. Yeah, it, it's it seems much more sensible. Like it seems like the websites which are built around this will continue to work in a way that it expects, um, without necessarily needing to be built targeting a particular mobile browser. Agreed. Uh, interesting detail on this one. The shift key is true, but it was lowercase, right? Oh no, 
You did it uppercase. Yes. So even though the key wasn't being held by tapping, by putting it into like the shift mode, it treated it as if the shift key was held down. Yes. So when you highlight an input on Android and iOS, it yeah. starts in uppercase mode. Yeah. So if you type a character like this, it is going to treat it as if shift was held down. But you do not get a key event for the shift key. It's like the shift was there for the letter, but it wasn't ever pressed. It's yeah. kind of weird. So it's interesting. So Android here is explicitly incorrect in saying shift is not true because you did press like the shifted character. Because in well, like, because again, it would say the shift key wasn't pressed. Like so, so that I think both are wrong here because iOS doesn't say the shift shift was pressed, although it was pressed but when the, the character, character was itself pressed. is shifted in that it's shifted to use the set of the set the set of characters in the uppercase set. And by, by uppercase, I mean literally the characters that are in the uppercase of the the of lowercase the, keyboard keys. Well, I was thinking of the printing machine from mechanical key printing, which is what these keyboards yeah. are, are based on. Interesting detail. If I now press the shift key, yeah. No event. Like the, the web page can't. Oh, so you, that in any you way. can't detect tapping shift like you can on a, with a. Well, if I now press the shift key again, iOS will now fire a key down event for shift. And if I now press a letter, it will give me the key down for that letter, the key up for that letter, and the key up for shift. So it's kind of different to that like, initial first state. Mm. It's it's sort of all it's all a little bit. Weird. So um, let's say you just start typing and you just press D. Does mm -hmm. it also give you the event for shift being let up? Not not when it's shift in the initial input highlight state. Okay. But in this state, because you've got you, you've you actually have to, you pressed have to, the you, shift you key. You have to load it in order for it to. Like, you have to start a a key down before it will fire the key up. Yes. Yeah, right. that seems to be the way it's 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 defined. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, on Android, it, it's just like, this isn't a real keyboard, so I'm not going to do much apart from fire uh, a key yeah. down event for this made up key. All right, next round. Okay. Which key was pressed? I'm trying to be smarter this time. All right, here we go. You ready? Yeah. Whoop, whoop, whoop. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's, that's not a help at all. <laughs> so that was hello in yeah. swipey keyboard speak. Um, so if I wanted, so if here, if you wanted to be um, awkward, you could fire um, key events for every key that was crossed by your finger. Oh, wow. Yeah. If you wanted. Yeah. But I don't think it will do that. That seems like a difficult thing to engineer and also not super useful. Uh, yep. Um, so um, I'd say maybe what might be ideal would be just f would be once they've like once the word has finished, mm -hmm. then fire key down events for all of the letters in the word as if they were individually yeah. typed. But judging by all of the previous things you've shown <laughs> me, I'm going to say it's undefined empty string and shift key false. Okay. Uh, well, in this case. It's actually quite, I'm lying, it's complicated. They're, <laughs> they're all complicated cases. Um, but you are correct for Android. Yeah. Yeah. W once again, Android is back with its, I don't know. <laughs> but you only get one key down and yeah. one key up, which I like that, because it suggests that there is a hello key. This is sort of lovely, isn't it? It's a lovely thought. Makes me want to build a keyboard that has a hello key. Exactly. And, and with keyboards where you can up, like add your own firmware, I bet you could. Yeah. Uh, iOS, nothing. There is no key down event for this, huh? Which I would say like seems more sensible because it's not pretending there's a hello key. Yeah. But there's almost it feels like there's been a shift. Like whereas iOS in previous times was trying hard to be compatible, mm. now we've got Android as the one that's firing a key down event, and iOS is just like, nah, this is this is nothing to do with keys. But I guess it's the kind of thing where if you're if you're listening for individual key press events, ideally you're you're playing a game that listens to single key presses or using an application where it's listening for like commands from the keyboard, like control yes. P or something like that. 
Whereas um, if you are swiping hello, you, the developer in all sensible situations, I would sincerely hope is using some kind of input field or text area or content editable where they, um, where reading the value of that would be the more sensible way to find out what the user has inputted. You're 100% correct. Yeah. Um, this whole thing is messy, dealing with like key events when you're actually dealing with input. Um, here's me. Uh, this is me in 2010. <laughs> uh, so nothing has changed since. No. <laughs> But yeah, it's 12, oh god, 12 years. 12 years ago, it's one of my first ever talks, and I'm talking about keyboard events. The talk is called Events Left Behind, and my wrap of it is they're keyboard gonna events get are less awful. awful. <laughs> and they're going to get less awful. And you know what? Here's the thing they did, um, because it was a lot worse. But then <laughs> smartphones became a thing, and things like, you know, did, that's when we got all of these bumpy bits with on screen keyboards, not quite. I guess 2010 like. was still in the bit where not like not everyone had a smartphone. I definitely didn't. The smartphone web was really terrible. I remember building like like web pages for um I was about to say web apps, but web web apps weren't super considered a thing then. Well they were kind of, but um yeah. Ajax web pages. Web web two. Yeah. I guess we called it at the time. I think at this point iOS had still had add to home screen on the early iPhones, but yeah. Super early mobile web. I, I think you hit upon like the like the whole problem that we have here. I, so th the reason this wasn't working for the Wordle clone was because this never worked in, on Android because it was just firing that undefined thing yeah. all the time. And what you said before is completely correct. This split where we've got the, the thing printed on the key and then the key itself doesn't make sense for user input. Mm. It's it it doesn't fit properly. And it's not just um it's not just on screen keyboards like swiping and all of that sort of stuff, but things like voice input. Mm. Like it's not a key, right? Yeah. Um there's a, a cases like this. H E L L P missed. Sorry. <laughs> um and then I press space. And it auto corrects. Like, again, yeah. the input is completely detached from the keys being pressed. Um, there's also just con like command and V pasting. Again, yeah. the input is then completely detached from the keys you're pressing. Also, in that case, you probably aren't even hitting the keyboard. You're probably, if, at least if you're on Android, you're long pressing the input and pushing the paste button. Ex yeah. yeah. Exactly. So yeah, no, you, you wouldn't even make an argument for a key being pressed there because yeah. it's com it's not even part of the the on-screen keyboard. Uh, Mariko did this uh, for me. This is how uh, typing on a Japanese keyboard works. That's so cool, isn't I, it? I love the way that it like collapses um, once like the it's phonetically spelt. Yes. So that's what's happening, uh, which I learned <laughs> last week, is it's it's typing in a, a phonetic way, and then you get the suggestions along the top for for how to collapse that collapse that down. And again, like if you're just listening to key down events, you are not going to get anything related to what the user is intending to, mm. to be typed. But we have these other events. And so I, I guess the kind of moral of the, the story I'm trying to get to here is that higher level events are always safer yeah. if they're actually related to what, what you want. Before we continue, so um, input and before input. Used both of those before. Selection change, use that too. The composition events. Yeah. Hold on to that. All right. <laughs> we'll get to that. <laughs> but if you've never used composition before, then neither have I either. And neither of most people watching this. Um, but I will I will get on to, to what those are. Right. But for now, I'm just gonna stick to the the input event because mm. it's the simplest one and it is the thing that would have solved this this yeah. case. Um, and is Helpfully five letters long, so you can put it in your slide. Isn't that nice? <laughs> yeah. Isn't that nice? Yeah, fits perfectly. Um, so the input event fires whenever the content of the text field changes. Yep. Which is all we really care about. So we can have here our div, and then a div for every letter. Mm -hmm. um, I'm going to give this aria hidden because I, I don't think it's, it's a, it's purely a visual yep. thing. We get our hidden input back. That is the thing that people are going to be interacting with. Mm -hmm the thing screen readers are going to be using. And then over in the JavaScript, you can just get those elements 
I get all those letters, and then here's their input event. When that happens, you can take all of the letters of the input, um, and then for each of these divs uh, per letter, just stick the correct letter in there uh, or an empty string default. Yeah. And that's the fix. And that's that's um, the Vercel Wordle clone. They switched to using a, a pattern very much like this. Yeah. And it works. It works for swipey typing. It works for like mm. vocal inputs. It works for pasting. Which is much works. more accessible, because there are many inputs that people will be using that don't necessarily fit to the smartphone input, because that doesn't work for lots of people. Yeah. I think the equivalent is like if you use mouse down and mouse up, mm. um, you're going to lose a lot of users compared to using click. Like If you actually yeah. mean click, uh, we've got this weird situation on the web where click doesn't mean with a mouse. It, yeah. It's a kind of activation event it mm -hmm. has become over time. But that works with a keyboard. These higher level events will work for many more people. Yeah. So in this situation, you want to detect when the, um, the user has finished typing. Do you listen for a return event, or do you wrap the input in a form and listen for the on submit? What would you do? I would do the on submit personally. So enter is on submit. Um, I wouldn't. So I would have it so that I would just listen for the on submit, because hitting enter in the input would fire the submit. Yes. So this is the app I made, uh, the Wordle Analyzer, so I get to advertise it here. Um, <laughs> And, and so I use a very similar system. I also use the selection change. So mm. you can like do selections in, in this fake input. It's just yeah. a collection of divs. Um, oh, that's night. Nice. And nice. you know, click on it and, and do all that sort of stuff. Mm -hmm. But when I, I sent this out to people, and it is you are just interacting with an input under, yeah. the, under the hood, like an input for, per row. Um, I sent it out to people. And the first bit of feedback I got from everyone was I typed my first word, and I pressed Enter, and it submitted. And, that was dumb. And like, that's not dumb. That's how the web works. But it yeah. turns out in this situation, that is not what anyone expected. Really? Yeah. Yeah. So I had to like, I'll, I'll put you had the, to like listen for the on submit event and and cancel it. I cancelled um, enter. Yeah. In in these, in, in fact, I I make it so enter goes onto the next field. Ah, okay. And there's lots of other little subtle interactions oh, so I had to put into this. Oh, so this is a a form with multiple inputs where each line is an input. Yes. And, and so, yeah, so I guess it makes sense if each line was a form and submitting it would move you on to the next one. Yeah, I think it's like because I've made it, it doesn't look like normal inputs. People don't expect it to behave like normal inputs. Yeah. So I'll, I'll put a link to the code for this because there's lots of little subtle interactions I've put in there that mm. aren't like how web forms work, but it seems to be how people expected this to work. Yeah. Uh, you asked about these. Yeah. Just so happens. Got a few slides on it. Fantastic. Because I didn't, I didn't know what these were um, at first. So I, I dug into the spec to find out uh, what they are. And they had to do with this. Uh -huh. So this is a composition. And you can sort of see how like the text has a, a blue outline at the top mm. there. So that's part of a composition. So the composition starts when the first letter is, is entered. And then it's composition update as as these changes happen. And yeah. in the event, it will tell you which character range it's, it's covering. And then once it's committed, that's the composition end. Wow. So the input will give you all of that information as well. So does that apply for Latin alphabets as well? So if I'm typing in hello. Not like this. I even guessed the word. Yep. What do you think? I'm going to say, so it's not getting a blue box. So, so it's a different operating system. Oh, than, yes. Um, assuming that this also supports composition events, then I would hope so. I would hope so, too. Um, so here's the event order. Yeah. Um, Android composition starts, composition update, and then you get an input. Yeah. And your input type is insert composition text. And you get the H, H, E. And so these are composition updates, L, L, O, or P, even, because I get it wrong. And then it does a composition update, and it's hello with the, the space. And, and that's, that's, that's that done. Cool. Over on iOS. Yeah. Input, 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 input. Insert replacement text. Input. <sighs> input. So again. So this is so this is off spec behavior. 
kind of. I won't. I. Oh, it, the spec is so vague. Yeah. I go, I can't blame iOS mm. for for breaking the spec here. It it to me, I agree with you. It yeah. does feel like a composition to me. It feels the same or very similar to the the Japanese input. iOS will fire composition events for the Japanese input. Yeah. But for the autocorrect, it sees that as something, something quite different. different. Huh. I don't know. I guess it's also like, like it has the same effect. I mean, it's a, like it's always annoying when there's differences between browsers, but like this actually does seem sensible though. It's yeah, both seem okay, and the spec doesn't say anything about yeah. autocorrect as far as I could read. Mm -hmm. So yeah, I mean, I I think the the moral of the story is uh, really keyboard events are awful. <laughs> um, but for a lot of the stuff that I've shown here, I've filed bugs. Yeah. So hopefully, uh, they'll get less awful. And if you want to come back here in 12 years' time, <laughs> we can see if that's actually true. If we can still come here and talk about like the web in 12 years' time, and it's still like a cool place for people are building cool stuff like Wordle, I would definitely be happy to come back in 12 years' time, even if the text events are still awful. <laughs> Brilliant. So is the keyboard a prop? Yep. OK, cool. I was wondering what you plugged it into. I was just no, like, it's not plugged into anything. Plug it into itself. It's not no, it'll explode. <laughs> oh, no. ah, what happens if I press this key? You're going to short circuit the keyboard. <laughs> <laughs>